Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thanks so much for watching today. Let's continue on with the Lisa Eldridge lip swatches and comparisons. It's nudes today. I'll have the other two videos linked for you in the description box down below. I started out with the pinks. There was kind of pinks and uh, maybe berries in there. And then as well as the reds. So you'll find both of those updated comparison videos in the description box down below. But guess what? Since I started those videos, we have the new Balm Embrace and I feel like it's important to add these in so that you can see how these guys compare to other neutrals in the lineup. So the lightest one here is Meet Cute. This is more of a peach, but it definitely is a neutral. Here is Meet Cute. This is the swatch of it on the back of my hand. I've learned a couple of things. I've had these for mm, nearly a week now. Here's what I've learned. First of all, these don't last terribly long on my lips. So you have to be really happy with wanting to reapply these. They feel amazing. They feel amazing. My lips always feel better after wearing them, but I don't find that this shine or the color lasts very long. I feel like the hydration lasts on my lips for two, two and a half hours. But if I want it to look glossy and like there's color, I get about an hour, maybe 75 minutes out of it and then I need to reapply. But if I'm going just for comfort and I'm not worried about what things look like, you know, do I look like I have something on? If I'm going just sheerly for hydration and comfort, these wear about two and a half hours on me. I don't know that this lip formula is for everybody. If you love to carry something with you and reapply without a mirror, you would love these. I do find that the deeper shades do need a lip liner on my more mature lips. The lightest three shades though, I kind of don't care. It doesn't really matter if it gets a little fuzzy around the lip edge, but I lo love how these feel on the lips. And I didn't think I was going to like Meet Cute, but Meet Cute is so easy to wear. So this is one that I have been wearing quite a lot because it goes with a lot of things. Here's Sweet Fig. Sweet Fig is a beautiful kind of more brown, but there's a little bit of mob to this. This is Sweet Fig. Here's what it looks like swatch. They got a little close there, sorry. <laughs> this is one of those that I feel like I can reapply without needing a mirror. Um, I feel like it's so close to the shade of my natural lips. I really kind of don't have to worry about it going places. Um, and it does, it does a little bit. Um, that is resolved by just wearing a lip liner with it. But the ease of these lip products, I don't always wanna wear a lip liner. I mean, you certainly could, and it's really gonna help contain it. But the truth is, I love the ease of it looking kind of a little bit undone, a little bit like I've been wearing it for a minute and it's not perfectly crisp. And that's definitely how all of my makeup is gonna look as we head more into summer. So I really love these releases. I think they're perfect for summer, but I don't know that if you like something that has just a little bit more color, it's gonna hang on a little bit more that this formula is gonna be for you. This is a luxuriously loosened lipstick in the lightest shade. This is called Lemme Pre. This is more of a peachy beige on me. I feel like this is one of those that because I'm not a huge fan of, you can see how it looks definitely more peach here. I tend to use this as a mixer. Does it work well on its own? Absolutely. But I don't myself prefer peach toned lipstick, which is why I wasn't sure me and Meet Cute were gonna get along. But I feel like this is a much thinner version of this, even though they look like they're very similar, like when you're thinking about, but there's more pigment to this. Now, if you love a nude and kind of like a peachy nude and you like something that's hydrating and glossy and comforting on the lips, you would love Lemon Pre. But this is one where I feel like I need to, oh, something got away from me, something got a little too dark, or I'm, I need a little bit of glow in the middle of my lips. They're looking a little dry. I reach for this. This works all the time. I always feel like Lisa Eldridge lipsticks don't need to be cocktail because for decades I used to a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I was always comboing my lipsticks and cocktailing them together to get like exactly the shade that I wanted. I was like, I wanted a bespoke color. I'm I'm making myself and I would just layer stuff on top of my lips till I got the shade that I liked but I do that with other brands and hardly ever with Lisa's uh, colors because they're just so good this is one though that because it's not my favorite color to wear I do use it that way and I find that it's very useful here is velvet intrigue this is the only matte that I have that is broken I know a lot of people say that they have problems with the matte formula, the velvet mats breaking off. I find that a lot of it has to do with, did I drop it? 
This one I dropped a couple of times. I don't really press that hard. And then on top of that, instead of pressing at an angle, I try and go more straight down. That kind of helps to make sure that I'm not, I'm not really abusing the bullet, but this one, she broke. We still use her, we still love her. Let's put on Velvet Intuition. I just called this the wrong name. This is Velvet Intrigue. It's actually a really lovely color. This is what it looks like compared to the rest. It does have a little bit more of that kind of peachy, but I like the depth of it. Um, and I really love the pigmentation of the velvets. I am a little sad this one broke, but it doesn't really keep me from using it. This is not one of those that I reach for all the time. I feel like it's one of those that if I'm wearing a really dark eye or I need a little extra light in the middle and I'm wearing the velvet formula and I don't want anything glossy, I'll reach for this shade because it does help to, like if I pat a little bit in the middle, it helps to give a little bit more of that dimensional ombre and not in a 2016 sort of ombre lip way, but just a little bit more like there's, you know, more dimension to the lips. This is a great shade. The next one is Velvet Fawn. This is probably my most used nude, mm, maybe, from Lisa Eldridge. I use this one all the time. This one goes with almost everything. Here is Velvet Fawn. I am astounded I haven't burned through this yet. This is one of those that I reach for all the time. It is the perfect lipstick when I've got like a really light face going on and I don't want too much on the lips. It's the perfect lipstick when I've got a strong, bold eye going on and I don't want it to look like I'm trying too hard. This is a beautiful lipstick. I love the extreme pigmentation, but you can see here, these guys are definitely warmer. And by the time we get to Velvet Fawn, there is a definite coolness compared to the rest. And I feel like that little extra touch of like a mauve or a pink in there really helps to make this the one because I love a, a nude that leans a little bit on the pink side. That's why this one's one of my favorites and most used. Here's a luxuriously lucent. This one's called Kitten Mischief. Here is Kitten Mischief. It's a little bit warmer. Muse definitely has more pigment to it because it's one of those velvet mattes, but this has more of a warm, almost uh, peachy lean to it. And you've heard me say, I don't like peach lipsticks. I don't know what it is. This one brings life to the face. When I wear it, I'm always like, oh, I don't wear peach lipsticks. And then I put it on, and I'm like, I love this one. The other reason I know I use this one a lot, there is a monogram right here on the front of the bullet and the top of the L is gone. The minute I get to the point, I have more than 300 lipsticks here. The minute I can see part of the imprint on the bullet is worn off and it's not at the top of the bullet, it's kind of like right there in the middle. I know I have really been loving and reaching for a lipstick. This is one of my favorites from the brand. I feel like it really suits a wide range of skin tones and that's what's great about Lisa. She's making shades that are gonna work for a multitude of people. This is Velvet Affair. I forget how good this is until I put it on. All right, here is Velvet Affair. It is definitely darker. It is on the warm side. If you love a warm but kind of deeper nude, you would probably love this. Now I know when I say deeper nude, this is a deep nude for me. I know I'm very fair. I wear Lisa's foundation in shade number two. I'm wearing the skin tint today. I wear the lightest shade in T1. I know that this is probably going to be like a mid-tone shade for people or even a light nude for others. But I feel like this, if you have fair or light skin, is going to be that beautiful, warm, toned, deep nude that you would probably find a lot of use for. Here's another luxuriously lucent. I kind of never know where to put this one. I talk about some of Lisa's shades being kind of like chameleons. They can pull one way, they can pull the other. I feel like this one does it. This is Spirited Away. This is Spirited Away. Here is what it looks like, and it looks so much more pink here compared to the rest. You know, we have some depth going on over here and some peachiness. When you put it on, depending on what else you're wearing with it, what clothes you're wearing, this one can pull a little bit more brown or it can pull a little bit more mauve, like a little bit more pinky here. It's reading a little bit more pink on my lips, but I've seen this look very brown before. And I think the interesting part about that is that these shades, it's described on the website as a modern rosewood. And I didn't even think of this one when I was doing like my pink lipsticks and a rosewood, I would think, you know, that it should go in the pinks. 
I don't even think about it because to me, this is a nude, <laughs> a, b a bolder nude, a brighter nude, a pinkier nude. But to me, that's what I see this as. But again, I think it comes down to the fact that those colors are so different and they do have that ability to shift depending on what you're wearing, what makeup you're wearing, what clothes you're wearing. And um, it is it is a pinky, pinky lipstick here, but sometimes she looks straight up brown. This is Velvet Cinnabar. This is a shade that featured in the red video. I don't really think of it as a red. To me, it's more of a rusty, deep, almost like a, a really vibrant nude shade. Here's Velvet Cinnabar. It is very much that warm, toasty shade. I know so many people absolutely love this lipstick. I think it's great, but this somehow I need to get it out of my mind that this is a lipstick for fall. <laughs> because this definitely feels like all of those warm cozy fall vibes as summer starts to end but this is a great lipstick for any time of the year I really like how pigmented it is I usually don't wear it this bold I will like tap it on and blot it down a little bit but this is a fantastic fantastic lipstick if you're looking at the velvets a fair pulls a little bit cooler compared to the warmth there does seem to be definitely terracotta but maybe even a touch of red in this when you compare the two but um i feel like they both are definitely a statement lip if you have fair to light tone skin and i feel like um, if you like these warmer shades or these um, kind of rusty shades this is definitely one you would love I think of this sometimes as a pink and sometimes I think of it as a nude. This is Velvet Muse. Here's Velvet Muse. This is one of those that is definitely more pink leaning. And as you see it here, it kind of resonates a little bit with Spirited Away, but the warmth in this is very, very different. And you could see how for some people this might be a straight up pink, but on me it works really well when I'm looking for kind of like a, a little bit of color, but not too much. There is that really nice, cool aspect to it because there is that little bit of pink or mauve to it, but to me it still does read as a nude. Another one of my favorite shades from the brand, this is Painterly. It's a luxuriously lucent. This is what it looks like here. It definitely has more of a rose tone to it compared to a lot of the rest. The reason I have it in here, I did feature it also in the pink video, is because this is one of those, again, a chameleon lipstick. I feel like depending on what you surround this with, it can kind of change. It can pull more cool and earthy. It can pull more pink. It can. It, it really does have the ability to kind of be used with a lot of different looks. You can wear it with a lot of different shades of clothing. Um, I feel like this is one of those that looks really good on a lot of people. And I've seen this one, like depending on what I'm wearing, makeup wise with my clothes, it is very changeable and it's not that the color changes because the color always stays the same but it's how my eye perceives it based on what is going on around it that's kind of like a cool magic trick in my book this is called meet me in berlin here it is in the swatch i love this shiny slightly warmer brown this is the lipstick that I needed in my college days. Okay, so I spent a year in Spain in the mid 90s and this sort of lipstick would have been perfect because everything back then was very matte and very opaque <laughs> and not comfortable at all. But this would have given me the those cool girl vibes without looking like I was trying too hard because when I wore the brick reds and the kind of like the dark cool browns it was too much they were just too heavily saturated I need the intensity dialed down just a little bit because it looked like like a sticker on my lips this mm, this looks so good and it complements my skin so beautifully I love this another one of those that's missing the top of the imprint on the lipstick because I love this one. Last one for today is Velvet Sorcery. Here is Velvet Sorcery. It's certainly the deepest of all of these shades here. This is one of those lipsticks. I understand when it first debuted, was it 2022? It sold out and it wasn't restocked for a while and people were clamoring for this shade. I get it. I get it, she's gorgeous. I normally, because it is a really high contrast shade and it is very dark, 
It can look a little vampy on me. I tend not to wear it full force like this. I tend to wear it blotted down, but on the days that I do want very much a statement lip, I love this shade. When I end up blotting Sorcery down, I end up wearing it like this. And I feel like when I do that, and it's not quite as dark as this, you can see that there are some rose tones in here. I feel like you get more of that mauve look, even though it is still dark, but it's not this dark. This is one of those lipsticks that I approach with caution, but I see why everybody loves it. And I think it's just because on my fair skin, this heavy, deep, really intense, pigmented, dark saturation can be a little overwhelming, but I love it like this. Here's where I wanna know. Do you love Lisa Eldridge lipsticks? If you do, and it doesn't have to be a nude, what's your favorite shade or your favorite formula? Cause there's several. Or if you are a nude lover, do you tend to wear ones that are kind of a pinky nude, a peachy nude, maybe more of a beigey, creamy nude, or do you look for ones that are kind of like straight up brown? And I, I guess I, there's cool browns, there's warm browns, but I, I'm curious, what are you looking for when you think of a nude lipstick? Let me know in the comment section down below. I will link those other two videos for you as well as the recent Lisa Eldridge Bomb Embrace video in the description box down below if you wanna see those comparisons. I hope you have a fantastic day. Keep reaching for those nude lipsticks and I'll see you again soon.